Welcome to Lab 10 for Physics 187. In this week's lab, we're going to use the results that we, we learned last week that stars have a relationship between their temperature and luminosity. And we can build a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram that once we know a star lies on the main sequence, we can use its temperature to determine its absolute magnitude. And once we know its absolute magnitude, we can use its apparent brightness or apparent magnitude in the sky, or relative magnitude as your lab manual refers to it, to determine the actual distance to the star. If you remember from last week, by looking at the spectrum of a star, we could determine its temperature, and once we had its, or determined where it was giving off the most light, and once we looked at that spectrum and determined the peak wavelength, we could use Wien's law to determine its temperature. From last week's lab, then, we realized that there was a relationship between the temperature of the star and its luminosity. And so we can use the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram to determine the absolute magnitude of that star. By looking at the star, we can determine its relative magnitude. And then we have a very simple relationship between the distance to the star measured in parsecs is given by just the number 10 raised to all of this, so you have to take the apparent or relative magnitude, subtract from it the absolute magnitude, add 5 to that, divide that result by 5, and then take 10 and raise it to that particular number. That then allows you to determine the distance to a star. So we are going to do that in this lab. We'll use spectroscopic parallax to determine the distance to a number of stars in the sky. Now, notice I have a little bit of a problem when I click on this particular star right here. I see that I'm getting a black body radiation curve for that particular star. But unfortunately, as I move my mouse around, I am not seeing what the wavelength is for this particular value. It's hidden down here somewhere. Now, I have two computers. On one of my computers, on my desktop, the peak wavelength actually shows up up here, and I have no problem whatsoever finding out where this value is. On this computer, the peak wavelength shows up down here. I don't know why, but we can fix that. So here's what you need to do. You need to go ahead and close virtual astronomy completely. And then you need to access your desktop and on your desktop, you need to change your screen resolution to the absolute lowest possible value you can have. So I've changed mine to 800 by 600. I've said, yes, this is OK. And I'm going to keep the changes. Now notice what's happened to my screen. I can't see nearly as much on my screen. But if I go ahead and open virtual astronomy and do the spectroscopic parallax lab, and go ahead and click on a star. I now can see this bottom menu where that information is available to me. And so I can now tell that this peak wavelength for this particular star happens at 333 nanometers. You may not have to change your screen resolution. You may be one of the fortunate few where the wavelength shows up without changing that resolution. But if you can't see that bottom menu bar, the solution is to change the screen resolution so that you can. So let's look at what this lab then actually entails. I get a view of the sky that has a number of stars. Go ahead and reduce the number of stars down to 50, or sorry, down to 20. And your spreadsheet that you will use to, to do this lab is set up for you to look at 20 stars. Okay. So now you have a field of view that should contain 20 stars. Notice a couple of them here are pretty dim, but you should be able to find the stars. The two bits of data you will need to collect for these stars are their relative magnitude and their temperature. So if I hover over this star right here, notice this box over here will have a bar that moves up and down. This will tell me the relative magnitude. And if I look at this particular star, notice the numbers decrease or increase going down. If I look at this particular star, it tells me that the relative magnitude is about 7.8. 
Remember, dim stars have higher numbers, and so this makes sense that the star that looks very dim on my field of view actually has a pretty high relative magnitude. So I would record 7.8 in the relative magnitude value for this particular star, which I'm told is star number two. Then I'll go ahead and click on the star. And when I click on the star, I will get the spectrum of this particular star with the intensity just defined in arbitrary units. Okay. Um, I notice that the brightest point occurs there, and so I'll do what we did last lab, is I'll just mouse over to where I think this peak occurs, and this tells me that for this particular star, the peak wavelength occurs at 454 nanometers. And so I can use Bean's Law to help me determine the temperature. Your spreadsheet will actually, and again, there's a reminder up here in the upper right-hand corner which star this is. So if I go to my spreadsheet and put in the peak wavelength for star number two of 454 nanometers, it will actually calculate for this particular star the temperature. It's about 6,300, almost 6,400 Kelvin. The absolute magnitude I would just record in this box right here. 7.8. And now what I need to do, oh sorry, the apparent magnitude. Now what I need to do is I need to find the absolute magnitude. To do that I need to go back to virtual astronomy. And so the, you'll be able to see a, a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram of the stars in your sky. What you should do is use the table you've, you've calculated, or the temperature you've calculated, and you can actually show a grid to help you find your way around a little bit. Remember, the temperature for that star was about 6,400 Kelvin. And so I'm going to go along the axis and find about 6,400 Kelvin. This is the star that I would identify. Come over here and see that the absolute magnitude for that star is about 3, 4, maybe about 3.3 um, on that scale. And so I would add, um, I would enter 3.3 for the absolute magnitude. On your first couple of stars, the star that you, you looked at will start blinking. Obviously, after you've started to look at more stars, the whole um, HR diagram will start blinking. And so you really need to pay attention. Use the temperature that you calculated to help determine what the absolute magnitude for the star in the sky is. If you go ahead then and enter that ma absolute magnitude value, which I decided was about 3.3, what the spreadsheet will do for you then is it will use the equation for the distance and it will calculate the distance for that star in parsecs and then also convert that distance to light years by taking the number of parsecs and multiplying by 3.26. As always, even though the spreadsheet does a majority of the calculations for you, you will need to show me one sample calculation where you use Bean's Law to find the temperature for a star and you use this equation here using the apparent the relative magnitude of the absolute magnitude to find the distance to a particular star. Um, the check your answers option for this particular lab will ask you to enter the star number, to enter the absolute magnitude, the relative magnitude, the distance in parsecs of the distance in light years, all of these should be checked. Um, you're calculating these values for 20 stars. I'm not going to ask you to do a screen capture for all 20 of those stars. If you could just give me screen captures for half of those um, arranged nicely on a piece of paper on your Word document, that would be great. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Good luck on this lab. And remember, you may need to change your screen resolution to be able to measure the peak wavelength for that star.